If you're a restaurant owner who wants to offer health insurance benefits to your employees, but finds it too expensive due to the size of your staff or simply doesn't know where to start, this episode is for you. Join us as we share a real life example of a restaurant that provides benefits to a team of just eight people. Today, I'm speaking with James Douglas, owner of Soul to Soul Benefits, about how he partners with Connect for Health Colorado to provide affordable and quality health care to employees in the restaurant industry at any budget. James started Soul to Soul Benefit Solutions with a person to person connection in mind. Having been both in the health insurance and hospitality industries for 10 plus years, he believes that the individuals on the other side of the health insurance solutions should know what their coverage options are and should have an advocate to help them navigate those options. His love for people and knowledge of the industry gave life to this opportunity to serve his community, build relationships, and use his skill set to support a better health coverage experience. In this episode, James and I discuss how his company helps restaurant owners provide affordable and quality health insurance to their employees. He explains the step-by-step process of offering health insurance through individual coverage, health reimbursement arrangements, or small group plans, and how employees can qualify for tax credits to make their plans more affordable. James emphasizes the importance of understanding the different health insurance options available and tailoring them to the specific needs of the restaurant and its employees. He also highlights the role and value of working with a licensed agent and broker. Welcome to the No Hesitations podcast, the show where restaurant leaders learn tools, tactics, and habits from the world's greatest operators. I'm your host, Kristen Marvin, with Solutions by Kristen. I've spent the last two decades in the restaurant industry and now partner with restaurant owners to develop their leaders and scale their businesses without wasting time and energy so they can achieve work-life balance and make more money. You can now engage with me on the show and share topics you'd like to hear about, leadership lessons you want to learn, and any feedback that you have. Simply click the link at the top of the show notes, and I'll give you a shout out on a future episode. Thanks so much for listening, and I look forward to connecting. Hi, James. How are you? Welcome to the show. Awesome. I'm doing incredibly well, and and thank you for having me. I'm I'm happy to be here. Absolutely. This is just an incredible, it's going to be an incredible conversation you and I have a little bit of history and background and had lost contact with each other. I think we had stayed connected on social media channels, but over the years, but we were reconnected a couple of weeks ago, surprisingly. And I was elated to see your name on the email. And I immediately reached out and said, is this James? Is this James Douglas? Is this the guy who I think it is? So <laughs> really excited to, to have this conversation and learn more about what you're doing to support the hospitality industry. So thank you so much for taking the time today. Absolutely. We we are going to talk about how you provo- provide um, affordable and quality health insurance to independent restaurants, to restaurant owners, to managers, and really restaurants of any size in the independent space and um, on any budget, which is just really exciting because a lot of the times I hear from restaurant owners that I work with or um, have conversations with, they really want to p- provide benefits, but they don't know where to go. They don't know the process of getting started and they think it's too expensive or it has been too expensive. So really excited today to show and um, go through some real life examples of restaurant clients that you work with and really walk the listeners through a step by step process of what this looks like, the, the type of support that you provide to them after the policy goes live and how you really work with their budgets to get creative. So let's start with a little bit of your background in the restaurant industry yeah um well it spans uh is, is, is i don't know somewhere around probably 10 years in the industry on or off, on and off uh everything from you know being a server to a manager uh a mom and pop italian shop when i was in college uh steakhouse uh i ended up obviously connecting with 
uh, you at Snooze, and uh, that was a completely different experience than anything I had ever been a part of. But um, I think as we start to (laughs) continue (laughs) that, for sure, Um, as we continue the conversation today, I think a lot of it's going to kind of dial back to the experience, the experience of a restaurant or the experience of a healthcare uh, solution or the experience of really everything in life. And um, I mean, I've been in, in big corporate uh, Darden uh, restaurants and uh, the culture is, is very different than say a mom and pop. And, and so the needs are very different, but each uh, arena needs a healthcare solution. And so uh, my handful of years in, in service uh, in the restaurant industry is, has really allowed me to relate with business owners on a level where I can, I'm able to speak their language, right? I understand their stresses, right? If there are slips and cuts and falls, like what's proper procedure? And and typically when a restaurant owner wants to know, okay, well, what's the proper procedure for healthcare? It sometimes is a struggle to to find and identify what that answer is and and wanting to provide those benefits to the employees is, it's a, it's a piece of the game. Yeah, absolutely. Would you talk about just kind of a big picture perspective? What you do um, at um, Soul to Soul Benefits, what you offer, and um, what type of restaurants you work with. Yeah, um, so there's a there's a famous billionaire. I'll, I'll leave his name out of it, but he goes, you know, if you can't explain it in less than thirty seconds, and you don't understand what you're doing, and so uh, the nutshell and the high level overview of what I do uh, and what we do at Soul to Soul Benefits is that we help employers provide health insurance to their employees in an affordable manner, right? There's obviously a little bit of strategy. The employer is going to, the employer is going to set a dollar amount per month based on their budget that the employee can then take and use to go get their own individual health insurance plan. And so the employer subsidizes that plan. The employee gets choices and options many times. Actually, I wouldn't do it if the employer didn't save money. And so, Ultimately, every it's a it's a win win across the board um, for people, and a lot of the barrier is just understanding healthcare, and that's where we advocate for the employer and the employee. Yeah, absolutely. It's I set up a healthcare plan back in the day, and it it was we had four or five restaurants I think in the company at the time, and it it was just so over my head. Um, and and you know I'm, I wasn't an expert in it. I know a lot of restaurant owners aren't experts in it either. It's a very complicated industry and uh, kudos to you for uh, for being in it. Would you talk a little bit about why you chose to go the health insurance route coming out of the restaurant industry? Yeah, honestly, I, I kind of I kind of just fell in it. Um, I was training as a professional long jumper uh, up in Fort Collins. I had an Olympic coach, uh, my training partner. She won the, the bronze medal in the London Olympics and the women's long jump. And uh, that was my, my dream and my goal. Uh, long story short, I got hit by a car while riding a bicycle, ended up moving back to Alamosa, Colorado. And uh, my track coach was uh, married to the CEO of the hospital. And there was a position that I applied for, gained the position. It was actually a position with Connect for Health Colorado. And so I was a health coverage guide for them in the first year of the ACA, the Affordable Care Act. And so that was kind of where I cut my teeth in the healthcare world. And a year later, I ended up being uh, stolen by a health insurance company. And I worked there for the next four years. Uh, And so that's how I kind of got started. I love it. So you've got 10 years in the restaurant business, 10 years in the health insurance space. You're (laughs) expert in both. I love that. Sorry about the long jumping um, accident. Me too. Yeah. Um, Talk a little bit about your connection today with Connect for Health Colorado and what they do. Yeah, so today Connect for Health Colorado is the only place in our state that you can go and get assistance, financial assistance to make health insurance affordable. And so when you look at all the other states um, in the country, many of them have something called healthcare.gov. Well, in Colorado, we don't have healthcare.gov because we have Connect for Health Colorado. And the easiest way to describe kind of what they what they are is kind of like a price line for all health insurance carriers. And so you're able to go to Connect for Health Colorado based on your zip code. You're able to see all of the different health insurance options that are offered to you. And then based on age, income, household size and zip code, <clears throat> you're able to 
to find a plan that's going to best fit your needs because you won't pick a plan that doesn't have your doctor and you won't pick a plan that doesn't cover your prescription. So you're going to find the best solution based on your current situation to identify what's going to be uh, right advantageous for you to pick. And so identifying that Connect for Health Colorado is a place where you go and get those tax credits is incredibly important, especially as we dive into um, really how does that play in the role of a restaurant owner wanting to help uh, provide coverage to their employees. Mm -hmm. Okay, awesome. Um, and then will you speak about the, all the products that you offer? Is it just health insurance? Yeah. So I think um, initially it started out as just health insurance. And then you start to understand like the employer wants to offer a full benefit set because the competitors down the road are offering a full benefit set. And so that has upgraded to dental, vision, ancillary, life, accidental, all of that can be packaged together based on the uh, the employer's budget. Um, and so the strategies that we, we can dive into, um, we can dive into is, right, the, the restaurant owner has a budget and we have to work around that budget. And so that strategy in utilizing and leverage Connect for Health Colorado and obviously taking whatever it is that you are wanting to contribute, the employer is wanting to contribute to their employees is ultimately the foundation for how you're going to provide coverage in an affordable way that makes sense for everyone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I love you work with, you know, you've got some examples here of a, a restaurant that's really small, one location, eight people on the plan up to a company that's got four locations, 200 people, right? With around 25 people on the plan. Walk us through the example. Let's use the the single location with eight employees. Walk us through that process from start to finish. And, and if you can speak to kind of what their budget was and then what you were able to find for them coverage wise, ta tax credits came into play there. Walk us through that scenario, if you would. Yeah. So uh, the single the single location for uh, that Ethiopian restaurant, they they had uh, they have uh, eight employees and when they came to me, they said, you know, I have a really tight budget. I said, you know, how tight is it? Um, they go, you know, we have a thousand dollars to contribute to the employees. Uh -huh. And so when you when you're working with that thousand dollar budget, you have to understand that that thousand dollars is only going to go so far, especially in the world of inflation today. And so if the uh, business owner were to give, uh, let's just say. The thousand dollars split up by. Um, eight, then we know that that's only $125 a month. But based on the salaries of the employees at this one location, they were actually eligible for $500, $600, $800 in tax credits per month. And so by the employer offering that $125, it is actually affordable because they're right, they're not the highest paid employees, the hourly workers are not the highest paid employees. And so by them offering that $125, it is actually a disservice to the six hourly employees who work there. And so what we did was we strategized in a way to let them go to Connect for Health Colorado. They then were able to get their four, five, six, eight hundred dollars a month in tax credits. And the employer now no longer has to contribute that $125 to those six employees. And so now there's a thousand dollar budget for the two remaining salaried employees. And so I want to be very clear here. You cannot carve out by management. You can't say my managers get to split a thousand and the employees, right? They get what's left. But when you start to structure and strategize, right, that saves the employer money and it allows for them to provide a better benefit for the salaried employees, right? Those people typically work more hours in the hourly. And then the hourly employees are now able to go and get these tax credits that they're eligible for. They're leveraging Connect for Health Colorado. They're leveraging all of those resources and tools to identify if their doctors and network, are their prescriptions covered, right? Are there, uh, right? All of that gets, gets put together in, in kind of one solution for the business owner, for the employees and for the employees' families. And so that's just kind of the first example uh, at a very high level of how they were able to put a, a healthcare solution in place. James, and then they you. actually contribute a hundred percent of the dental and vision as well. Okay, great. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm curious, would you, would you circle back to, and maybe I missed it. 
how does a restaurant or the restaurant's employees qualify for the tax credit? Yeah, so tax credits are based on age, income, household size, and zip code. And so um, when you are looking at tax credits in general, the only way that you can qualify for a tax credit is if you, um, one, do not receive an affordable offer from your employer, you are not on Medicaid, and you are not on Medicare. So those are kind of the three different chunks that you have, right? You have Medicaid for people who a household of one making less than about eighteen to twenty thousand dollars a year, and then Medicare is for the individuals who are sixty-five and older who have worked their forty quarters, right? That is their their Part A and their Part B benefits, right? C and D as well. Um, but then there's everyone else in between who doesn't get offered um, from their employer or who doesn't get coverage through their spouse. And so this hole in, in the restaurant world where a lot of the, the workers fall into is an opportunity for the employer to say, hey, I've structured a health insurance solution so that you can go and get these tax credits in such a way that you're going to make, it's gonna make their plans way more affordable and it's gonna help the employer save money in the process. The employee is gonna get choices and options the employer is going to be able to now take the budget that they do have and right and now provide it to the employees who are salaried or who are uh, in a different geographic uh, location. There, there are many different classes that we can kind of break out, um, okay. but that's kind of how it works. Hey there, podcast friends. I hope you're enjoying these impactful conversations and leadership insights I'm bringing you each week. Before we dive back into today's episode, I want to take a moment and reach out and ask a small favor that would go a long way in supporting the show. If you've been loving the content I'm providing, please take a moment to leave a rating and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. Not only does it make my day, but it also plays a pivotal role in helping the show grow. Your reviews boost my visibility, attract new listeners, and encourage exciting guests to join me on the mic. So if you want to be part of my show's growth journey, hit that review button and let me know what you think. Thanks a million for being awesome listeners. Howdy, listener. Are you also a podcaster seeking to stand out in the crowded audio landscape? I'm here to help. L. Connor Voice, LLC, offers top-tier audio engineering, meticulous content management, and more, all tailored to save you time and elevate your podcast to new heights of professionalism. With L. Connor Voice, you can focus on what you do best, creating captivating content, while I handle the rest. Say goodbye to hours spent tweaking audio levels and managing uploads. I ensure your podcast shines with polished sound quality and seamless delivery. Ready to take your podcast to the next level? Contact L. Connor Voice LLC today and make producing your podcast as easy as hitting record. For more information, go to lconnorvoice.com. Links are in the episode notes. And then do you find that, we'll get back to the rest of the example here in a second, but I'm curious, um, are employers wanting to, are they finding success offering full health insurance benefits to employees or is it more accidental when it comes to the restaurant business? What what do you find is the most popular? And, and just- accessible? Yeah. I mean, it's a great question. Um, it, and it, the, I, and I, I truly uh, dislike answers that are like, it depends, right? Every <laughs> situation is unique. <laughs> uh, but it, when it comes to the restaurant world, every restaurant is uh, unique in the sense that their budget is different, their personnel is different, their culture is different. Um, right? When you start to look at the market in the state, in the cities, and the counties that they operate in are very different. And so here in Colorado, the individual market is very strong. In, in Colorado, the small group market is incredibly expensive, right? For the last three years, I've seen 17% increases on what they were already paying. Last year were 31% increases. This is a trend that is not sustainable for any employer, let alone a restaurant, right? Cost of, cost of goods has gone up like crazy. Um, we don't need to dive into that. But 
understanding that in Colorado specifically, um, the individual market is great. When you look at Arizona, the small group market is phenomenal. And so when you start to quote out different um, options or different paths that the business owner can take, we compare both. Because if we don't know what apples to apples actually is, then that's a disservice to the to the employer. But it also doesn't allow for them to be educated to make the best decision. And so based on the county, based on the state and the zip code, if an ICRA, it's an acronym, I-C-H-R-A, stands for Individual Coverage Health Reimbursement Arrangement, kind of a tongue twister. Um, right. If that is a better solution for the business owner, then that is saying that the market that they operate in, the individual market is stronger and the individual market is less expensive. If it's, say, Arizona and we're comparing an ICRA to a small group plan, small groups going to win because small group rates are are better. They're, they're less expensive than the individual market. And they're also small business owner tax credits um, if they want to provide uh, a small group health insurance plan. And so okay. small group, individual, it depends on where the, the owner is. Okay, got it. So let's go back to your uh, Ethiopian restaurant that has eight employees. So once they've determined if they qualify for tax credit, once they've chosen the plan that they want to sign up for, what what's the process look like then? Yeah, so um, typically open enrollment for health insurance is November 1st through January 15th. That's countrywide, doesn't matter where you are. And so if you do not get health insurance, in that window of time, then you technically cannot buy it without something called a qualifying life change event. And so when the business owner offers an ICRA or offers a small group plan to their employees, it opens up what's called a special enrollment period for everyone that is offered, every, every employee who is benefit eligible to then go shop and get health insurance. And so once that process is put in place, they offer, the employees pick their plans, then um, there's a payment structure put in place depending on how, uh, which path you go. And once the, the, the premiums are paid monthly, then right, the cards are sent, the welcome kits are, are, are sent out by the carrier. Every year, the employee is going to have to pick a new plan. If it's small group, right, there's an annual uh, renewal that comes up. If it's an individual coverage HRA, then the individual plans change year to year. And so uh, they're, they're going to say, hey, I liked this plan that I was on, right? When open enrollment is coming up, they're going to say, hey, James, right? That's a service that I provide to the business owner is I assume the, uh, I don't want to call it an HR position, but I assume the admin support in helping their employees make their choices on their health insurance, dental vision, ancillary, through software and technology that they can literally go into the portal, make a few clicks and say, hey, I want it to stay the same or I want to make some slight uh, adjustments to this benefit this year. And so that is um, the support that comes on the back end. But understanding that you don't really want to be on the same plan for forever because, right, your needs are going to change. Um, family size and household sizes are going to change. And so um, understanding, taking a look at it each and every year allows for me to educate the employee, the employer, on what's going to be the best fit moving forward in the next year. Okay. And then uh, will you refresh my memory on um, the what constitutes a, a qualifying event? Yeah. Um, you can get married. You can get divorced. You can have a child. You can adopt. Um Right, you can uh, change states. Uh, moving from state to state is uh, considered a qualifying life change event. Uh, you can gain citizenship. Um, you can be released from incarceration. Um, there, there, there's a laundry list of qualifying life change events. And um, yeah, I mean, as the as the restaurant owner, um, just know that when you choose to offer either small group or an ICRA. Right. That is going to open up the qualifying life change event for your employees, which is going to allow for them to shop, which is it's great. OK, so if I'm a restaurant owner and you talked about your support that you offer during open enrollment, but if I'm a restaurant owner and I am HR, um, which is a lot of the case, right? If I have health insurance offered and I hire a new employer, a new manager, what does support look like from you from there? 
Yeah, so I'm, I, I would be an extension um, and an assistant to the HR, uh, right? Our team would, so mapping out the process, let's say an ICRA was put in place, right? The employer set 300 bucks a month they want to give to their salaried employees and um, that's their that's their solution. So the employees would then go pick their plan. If they picked a $200 a month plan, then right, they don't pay anything per month. But if they pick a $400 a month plan, then there's still $100 that is out there that the employee is responsible for. And so what's going to happen is the employer is going to pay the full $400 for that employee, and then they're going to payroll deduct the $100 from the employee's paycheck on a pre-tax basis, and it's going to look and act very similar to group. And so what will happen is, is HR then is going to want to know, hey, you know, how much do I need to pull from James's paycheck each week? And so, right, we would come in, we would say, hey, James picked a $400 plan. You guys are contributing $300 right? Each paycheck, you need to take out 50 bucks. And so if you got paid twice a month. And so that calculation and those reports are all run through the, the tech platforms that we use. And it's all kind of like wrapped up in a nice little bow um, for, for HR to, to say, hey, this is what we need to deduct each and every year. Um, Perfect. So you're offering the hands-on support for the restaurant owner to make sure that that employee gets set up with a plan of their choice. They fully understand the ins and outs of the plans and the cost. And then you're providing the information to the restaurant owner that needs to be sent over to payroll if there is an additional deduction per paycheck that needs to happen. Absolutely. Uh, and so when you when you start to look at, right, and a, a restaurant owner can only wear so many hats, right? And they always find a new hat to wear because it's the, the hat is needed to be worn. Um, and so they're, they're problem solvers, they're solution seekers. And if, if this is just one hat that we can take off of, uh, you know, their plate, or if this is one hat that we can assist in implementation and administration and ongoing support, then having a licensed agent and broker on deck is incredibly helpful because it's not the employer's job to sit here and say, like, you should be on this plan. Like, no, the employee should pick what plan they want to be on. But that's essentially what we do in the small group model is say like, hey, we go to a carrier and then we say, we're gonna offer uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. All right, we're gonna offer a Cigna plan. And okay, well, if we're offering Cigna plans only, how many plans of Cigna do we get to choose? Well, now, right, we might give two, maybe three options and that's gonna cost the business owner, right, money and funds to do that. And so when we say, okay, we offer health insurance, here are your choices, one, two, maybe three. Well, if you only have two choices, that's a dilemma. And if you have three, you're just like, okay, well, I guess this is the, the, the best for me based on what I have. And right. And we all have to play the cards that were dealt, but understanding that your employees truly are going to have choices and options once they go to the individual market and look at, um, what's available. Uh, so for, for just for context, uh, there are six health insurance carriers here on the front range in uh, Denver. So like where I live personally, there are 87 plans that I can choose from. So if you put a small group option in place and there are three plans to choose from and people still can't pick those three plans and I come on board and say, hey, here's 87, that's incredibly confusing. But there are filters and values that you can put in place like um, – just a, a little practice that I, I, I have everyone, literally anyone that I help, I have them prioritize these five things. <clears throat> Your doctor, premium, deductible, office visit copays, and prescription copays. And so I don't care what the order is, but I have them identify what is the most important thing of those five uh, variables. And if they say premium is the number one thing that we need to pay attention to, I go find the cheapest plan that's available. But if they say James, uh, my number two focus is deductible. I have to have a low deductible. Well, then I can't just go find the cheapest plan because that's probably going to have a higher deductible. I now have a second filter of saying, okay, well, what is the most bang for your buck, right? And then I need to have my doctor in network. I need to have prescription office visit co-pays at this threshold because I go this many times. So um, many times people will sit here and say like, oh, I need the best. I need a gold plan, but I only go to the doctor once a year. Well, it's really hard to recommend that you, you fork out $400 a month for a gold level plan if you only go one time 
and every single ACA compliant plan is going to give you an annual wellness exam paid for at 100% one time per year. Right. And so if I can save the employee money on the back end, then they are incredibly excited. If I can save the employer on the back end money that they don't have to uh, give to a, 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 a carrier, right? Then they, they now have additional funds that they can put into like a end of the year party, salary or compensation raises, um, right? Uh, you, would be, you would be shocked at the things that employers uh, can, can provide if they have the, the resources and bandwidth to do it. They're, they're very generous. Uh, I love it. I, I'm, I, I'm not surprised by you because you've always just been professional and caring and, and hospitable, but I love what you just said about looking out for the employee and the employer. That's awesome. Cause I know you mean it. <laughs> I know you, yeah. mean it, which is great. So what, Absolutely. what have we not talked about? What else do listeners need to know about, about you, about the company, about what you offer? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, it's a, it's a journey, right? Like you didn't start your restaurant to become a healthcare expert. And so understanding that trust does absolutely need to be built and, and putting trust in a person who is licensed to understand that there are affordable care act compliant plans. And then there are companies out there who parade around acting like health insurance companies. And they say things like we have PPO networks, when they really don't, they just rent a piece of a carrier's network because carriers do do that. And so now they put out marketing material saying we offer a PPO and this is really, and they don't have to charge the prices that an ACA compliant plan includes because they're not including all of the benefits. And so when you're looking at some of these off, uh, we'll just call them non-compliant plans, the pricing is very low. And they tell you this, you get low co-pays, low deductible, but they, what they don't tell you is that they stop paying after a certain threshold. And so if you find yourself in a, in a very bad place um, medically and you have a $100,000 claim, well, it turns out that this uh, non-compliant plan might stop paying after 10 grand and you still get stuck with 90,000, right? And then when you look at an Affordable Care Act compliant plan, ACA compliance, there are 10 essential health benefits that are included in each and every plan. Whether you agree with them or not, they are all included. And an annual wellness exam one time per year is one. Ambulatory and emergency care is one. So no matter where you go in the world, right? Now, the, right, carriers do not like paying for care outside of the US, let alone uh, outside of their network. And so understanding that there, there's verbiage in a document called an explanation of coverage that is 100 pages plus deep. And in that evidence of coverage, it states things like you have urgent and emergent care wherever you are. So if you were to fly out of state or out of the network or out of the country, then there's, um, there's a word, one word, that kind of revolves around how much your health insurance company is going to pay. And the word is stable. And so if you get hurt out of network, it is that facility's job to get you stable. And once you are stable, it is your responsibility to get back in network as quickly as possible. Otherwise you will start to incur. So urgent and emergent care um, is included in all ACA compliant plans, um, right? All of this information is stuff that the restaurant owner does not have to know because we know it and understanding that um, it is going to take time to trust and understand like, okay, these are the things that are important to me. And it's the restaurant, the, the business owner's job to communicate that to me. And then it's my job to make sure that I service and make sure that you are not only getting those things, hopefully I'm exceeding those expectations, but also you have enough wit around it where you're not just blind and just blind trusting that I'm, I'm going to take care of everything. I am. But it's also very helpful to know that there's a trusted relationship in place um, and you don't have to right? I'm going to tell you what you need to pay attention to kind of thing. Yeah, I wish uh, I wish you were around back in the day when I was choosing plans, because I, I will say I've unfortunately been surprised by a couple of our health insurance plans of covering not covering things like ambulance 
rides and then getting, you know, some $3,000 bills in the mail going, oh, this is great, right? Um, so How do not work? I, it makes so much sense, obviously, to tailor it to your lifestyle, right? Whether you, like you said, if you're traveling or um, what you do for physical fitness or, or how you spend your time or hobbies or whatever. But um, yeah, good. You know, we're always learning, aren't we? <laughs> Down the road. Oh, yeah. Um, are you licensed only in Colorado? Uh, I am licensed in Montana and Colorado, and then I have business in California, uh, Texas, and um, actually, I might be coming to Arizona pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, How so. can people get a hold of you? Uh, they can find me on my website, um, soul to soul benefits.com. It's S O U L to S O L E. And so, just so people have context, that is taking the person and physically getting them to where they want to go. Um, that's kind of how uh, we came up with the name, soul to soul benefits.com. Um, or, uh, I mean, you can, obviously, you're connected with you. And um, yeah, that's absolutely that's all kind of, And uh, really cool, you know, for anybody that's listening here, if you want to uh, connect with me or have me connect you with James, there's an option now. If you just go to the top of the show notes, you can simply click um, click the link and send me a text message with your email address, and I'd be happy to connect you guys. Uh, James, for anybody that's listening that's outside of where you're licensed, what would you recommend? Where can they go to start learning more about tax credits and, and find a, a health insurance provider? Yeah, so um, just a, a, a small piece of what I was doing prior to opening the agency, um, I was a regional sales director for a fintech company for the 22 most Western states in the country. And so I actually know many of the markets across the country. And if uh, you have questions, you can still reach out to me. And then I have partners all across the country. Uh, I'll make sure that you end up in, in excellent hands. I love it. You are a wealth of knowledge, my friend. Thank you so much. Thanks for the work that you're doing too, oh. supporting the industry. You know it. I know we both love it and it means a lot to us, but it uh, means a lot to me for sure. So thank you so much for being here. Really appreciate your time. Thank you for breaking this down uh, and making it a little bit more digestible for sure. It's very important. This is a very complicated subject. And again, just excited about the customization here, the creativity, your passion behind this and knowledge of both the restaurant industry and the health insurance industry, you know, spending 10 years in both. You're, you are the expert. So everybody's in good hands and um, yeah, just can't, can't thank you enough. Really appreciate your time. It's a pleasure being here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. We'll stay connected. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for listening. If you know anybody in the restaurant industry who could benefit from listening to this podcast, please feel free to share it with them. You can listen in anywhere you listen to your shows. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you next week.